All right, so it's that time of year again when a lot of people are contacting us saying they want a baby goat, they've always wanted a baby goat. But there's a few things that you really need to know to make taking your baby goat home successful. You can't just have one for one. These guys love a group, they love a herd. They don't mow the yard, they're not really grass grazers. They prefer to eat browse and things that are up high off the ground and they require vet care. These are just like dogs or cats and they have health issues and you really need to have a good relationship with a veterinarian. So we're gonna go over a few of those things as well as housing and a few other things to make sure that when you take your baby goat home, you're all ready for a happy, healthy relationship. We've got them for the girls, we've got them for the boys, we've got them for the babies, we've got Excel sheets, we've got so much paperwork, it's insane. Keeping everything organized is gonna be the number one thing that you're looking for in a breeder. Any breeder that you get your goats from, the two most important things you should see is one, you should see their records that they have tested their goats for something called CAE, and that is a goat disease that if you have one goat in your herd that has it, all of your goats can potentially get it. Another thing is going to be Yoni's disease. Now both of those diseases are easily tested for just using a small vial of the goat's blood through your local extension. We do it through our Clemson Livestock Poultry and Health Extension and it costs about $18 per animal to get them tested. And we do that annually to 100% of the herd. That's something that you're gonna to need to ask for anytime that you go to somebody's farm to buy goats. Not only do you need to ask for health records to make sure that the goat is healthy, but you also need to ask for breeding records. As you'll see here, our goats are registered with the American Dairy Goat Association. Now, in this paperwork, you can see that our goat, our boy goat, has his lineage and he is registered in our name. Now this just shows who his mom and dad are and when his date of birth is, as well as who he can be bred with. It shows the goats on our farm that he's not related to. So with the ADGA records, you really need to be able to see where this goat came from and you need to have these in your possession either at the time that you purchase your baby goat or you need to have the register or transfer of registration form. That's what is more often sent with baby goats. Like if I sell a registered goat, that's what we send with that. And then you can register that baby goat yourself, which means that you get to name it. However, if you're buying an older goat, you're gonna have this paperwork that shows that it's already been registered. So buying from a reputable breeder is gonna be number one. That breeder should also have a knowledge of goat care and be available to help you if you have any issues with your baby goat. If you go to somebody's farm and they walk out into the center of a field with a bunch of goats and grab a baby from a mama goat and say, here you go, stick a bottle in its mouth and it'll be fine, then you're probably not going to enjoy that goat to the fullest potential because it's probably not gonna be very healthy in the long run. Now, when we talk about proper shelter, there's a couple of different options that you can have. We've got two different areas that we house baby goats in, and this is the main one that we house baby goats in when they're the youngest. So if you come up in here, you're gonna see First off, that it's a ramp getting up in here. And this just causes them to have to climb a little bit. It knocks some dirt off their feet. And there's a cover out front that keeps everything super dry. If you look at the ground here, it's actually cracked because it's so dry here. If you look over here, we've got their mineral and baking soda feeder in an area where they cannot get their feet in it. If they do get their feet in it, then that's gonna spread disease from one goat to another. And they've got their hay in an area that's high up off the ground where they can't get in their hay and the hay stays dry. So that's a very, very important thing because this is what they're gonna be weaning off of. They're gonna be going from eating milk to learning to eat hay. Now, if there's a bad storm coming through or if you're looking at potentially predators coming in or something like that, you're gonna need an area where you can lock your goats up, especially those first few nights. This is where we put our goats at when we first lock them up those first few nights because I can completely, watch out babies, come on babies, work with me on the video now, come on babies, come on, we're trying to show the people how to take care of you, okay? All right, so if you look here, I can easily lock this up. Now if it was 100 degrees outside that day, I can still have these goats in here. It's totally shaded, they're super good ventilation. This is a five foot tall door, so no goats are gonna be able to jump over it and rain is not able to come in here 
and the inside of this building has ventilation all around the top of it and it's got a secure lock on it so we don't have to worry about predators getting in here at all. Also, we've got animals around the outside perimeter that are guard animals. We've got dogs and alpacas that are gonna make sure no animals can access this building at all because these goats are totally defenseless. They're just budded, they are babies, and they cannot protect themselves in any way, shape, or form from predators. Now in the mornings when I come out to let them out, I can reach over and unlatch this and let them out easily, and they're not gonna fall, they're not gonna get hurt, and they can get right down to the pasture or wherever they wanna go. The only bad thing to having a building like this is this floor in here is plywood which means that all their pee and poop is gonna soak down into that wood and it's not going to be able to easily be removed. So anytime that you're looking at plywood or anything like that, you're gonna run into issues with stuff rotting and having to clean it out more frequently. If you were to house adult goats in here, you would really need to have a tarp up under the bedding and you would need to change it out at least weekly. Oh, good little baby. I know. So we're gonna head on over to the other shelter that we have, and it's one that I prefer. However, it does not have an area where you can lock them up. So if you had this other type of shelter, it would be great, but you would need to lock them up in something like a barn stall overnight for those first few nights until you knew that you weren't gonna have any issues with them getting tangled up in wire or something like that inside of their pen or a predation. Now the most important thing with any animal shelter is going to be to make sure that it is actually a shelter. What you're sheltering them from is the sun, the rain, and any type of wind or hail or anything that's blowing towards them. That's what this shelter right here does. And this is for a very few number of adult goats. You could probably put three Nigerian dwarf goats in a shelter like this. This shelter is more of what I like. It's up off the ground. So there's absolutely no wet dampness, moistness inside. Any urine or feces falls between the cracks. I've got my hay feeder up here on the side and that keeps the hay up and it's easy to clean any hay that's dropped and it's easy to get any of the pee or poop up off the ground just with a simple shovel or a rake. We clean this out probably about once, maybe twice a week, depending on how many babies are in here. The only downfall to a shelter like this is it would really need some type of door across the front to be a permanent shelter so that you could lock the goats inside of there overnight when they're younger. And that could be achieved by using a simple piece of cattle panel, just something that they cannot get out of and predators cannot get into. So you have a safe place overnight. I know, don't you love your little house? Don't you love it? Now, when these guys are younger, we do put hay inside of their shelter. The reason we use hay and not straw is simply because they're gonna munch on a little bit of the bedding and we want them to be, start munching on that hay. We use a mixture of coastal and alfalfa, but we really want them to start munching on that and it's a little bit tighter. Now, you wouldn't wanna use hay for an adult animal because it will mold. So because we're cleaning this every couple of days, it doesn't really matter, but with an adult animal, it would get pretty nasty pretty quickly. And if you pan around, Jonas, and look at this pen, this pen is all on a slope. So there's absolutely nowhere that mud or water can build up. This is a nice sunny area for them, but they do have umbrellas for shade that we put up on hot days. And they also have multiple hay feeders to encourage them to eat. And we let the grass in here get really, really high. If it gets four or five inches, then they'll start munching on it. But they really don't like it when it's just one or two inches. Now these slats are just made out of regular deck boards. Whenever you're making these, you wanna be really, really careful not to space them out too much at all because as the board dries out, it will increase the spacing. And these baby goats can fit their hooves in between these holes very, very easily. So you wanna make sure that they're not big enough for a baby goat to get its legs stuck and potentially broken. So while these are good, they do come with issues if you do not correctly size them when you're building your structure. Um, and we do use treated wood on this. We found that it lasts a lot longer and we really, a goat might lick it or bite it once or twice just to investigate when you first build it. After that initial curiosity, they get over it fairly quickly. So as far as water with baby goats, this is dirty because I just got done weed eating, but you want a little water bowl that you can keep 
in an area where they are a lot. Baby goats get hot very easily and figure they are either weaned or going through the process of weaning. So you wanna make sure that you get a small bowl of water that they can't drown in, that they can easily drink out of and don't step in or pee or poop in but you want it to be small and easily accessible for them. So something like this, it's a heavy duty ceramic bowl, is perfect for baby goats. All right, so as you can see here, we have got a lot of medicine. So all this medicine has a use. We've even got a fridge with medicine in it. This is where we keep our CDT shots. CDT is one of the most important things that you should be well versed on before you even consider buying a baby goat. This is the only shot a goat gets. That's all you gotta do for a goat, vaccination wise. So if you don't know what that is, you're missing something. But anyways, you are gonna have a tremendous amount of stuff that you have to learn when you get this baby goat. The first thing you should do before you even take that baby goat home or even contact the breeder is find out what veterinarians in your area uh, will come out to your farm to help you. What happens if that goat breaks a leg or years down the road it's having a baby and there's issues with labor or you go out there and the goat's laying on its side totally non-responsive but breathing what are you going to do then that's not the time to start going on your facebook forum and searching for help that's the time to call your veterinarian and i will do everything i can to help anybody with goat issues but there's certain things that i don't know or i can't do on our farm, we use ARC Veterinary Services, LLC. You can Google them, they have a web page, and you can contact them and do what's called a herd visit. They're just gonna come out a day, a week, a month after you get your baby goats, and they're gonna look at the housing, they're gonna look at the health, they're gonna do fecals on the baby goats, and they're gonna tell you things that you need to be doing to make sure that your baby goats are healthy. Now, it sounds like this would be astronomical in cost, but it's surprisingly low cost, just to do a herd visit. They can show you things like how to do your own fecals, like we do on our farm, which will tell you about parasites that may be living inside of your goat. They can do things like tell you about medicines that you may need to get, like we have, so that you can treat goats preventively and also have things on hand so that if there is an emergency, you can handle it yourself. You don't need to schedule these visits even annually. You can schedule maybe one every two or three years, but you really need to treat this like you're bringing home a kitten or a puppy. Goats deserve the exact same amount of care as that cute little fluffy angel that you brought home from the pet store. Um, they have all the same type issues and plus some, and there's a lot of veterinarians that aren't well versed on goat care, so you really need to make sure that you find one that is willing to see your goat. There's simple things like Barvac CDT. This is the best CDT that you can get. Um, this has the highest rate of success with establishing antibodies in your goat herd, and you can purchase it at valleyvet.com in either 10 dose vials, or you can purchase it in 250 ml bottles like I get. But this is something that all goats need annually, and they have to have it twice when they're between three and six weeks old. So you really need to have some of this and know what it's used for if you're gonna have goat on hand as well as things like Toxaband. This right here, if your goat gets into your azaleas and you're worried about them getting sick, you can give them this and it's just oral suspension charcoal and it's going to make sure that they do not suffer from any of the harmful effects of poisons they may ingest, if you catch it soon enough. <laughs> Do I look cute? Just like walking, rubbing my hand on the fence, like all like freaking, like I'm awesome and stuff. I think it'd be great. I'm pretty much a movie star. Look at me on YouTube. So one of the biggest issues that people are often faced with when it comes to goats is predators being able to get in, goats being able to get out, or goats getting their heads stuck in the fences. So what we use on our fencing is the top board is two inches by six inches, and the bottom board is two inches by six inches. And then on this pin, we have two inch by four inch welded horse wire fencing. And you can also use woven wire. I would recommend using woven wire. It's a little bit easier and cheaper to put up but this does do good with the top and bottom board. But if you use the welded wire, you do have to have a top and bottom board. Now, the good thing about having the top and bottom board is that a goat cannot push out from the bottom and a dog cannot push in from the bottom. And in addition to it being a top and bottom board so that animals can't push in or out, you also wanna make sure the goat's heads can't get stuck out of the fence. If you're using say four inch by four inch or six inch by six inch wire, then a goat can have its head outside of the fence 
and a stray dog or something like that can attack them. The minimum height for a goat is always gonna be four foot tall, but it's recommended to go five because if there's anything setting around the sides, goats can jump about three or four feet depending on the breed. So four feet minimum, I definitely would recommend for adult goats to go with some type of electric in addition to this fence right here. And we'll show you what we do for our adult goat in regards to electric. If you wanna get really fancy with your goat enclosure, you can also build a corral because as soon as you go to visit with your lovely little babies, they're all gonna try and run to you. So what we've done here is we have a two gate system. So what that means is that when I'm going inside, I walk in and close this gate and then I can walk into this pen and if the goats happen to get out, they're still in a controlled area. And this is also nice for when you're doing things like vaccinations or worming. You can worm one at a time and leave them in the corral while you're grabbing another one so that you don't do one twice or not one at all. All right guys, so what we have here is it's set up for electric on our goat pen. So what this is, is just obviously an electrical outlet. And on that, we have this 15 mile electric fence. It's made by American Farmworks. We got it at Tractor Supply. Hooked to that is a grounding rod that goes down into the ground. And then buried under the ground is the hot wire that actually runs to the goat pen to electrify this top line. Now our goats only have a top line, one because we don't like our goats jumping up on the fence, but two because we didn't want our dogs getting out. We have livestock guardian dogs with our adult goats because they're a lot farther away from the house. And so this hot wire right here keeps them from jumping out. But if you look at the fence that goes around the perimeter, it also keeps predators from being able to crawl over the fence. You can see here, this portion is about six inches above the top of the fence. So if there was a dog or any type of bobcat or stray animal that was trying to crawl over this fence, they would hit that electric and it would keep them out. It would at least deter them from coming in. So if you just have a few baby goats, it isn't that big of a deal to hold the bottle. But for us, because we have up to 60, 70 baby goats a year, we have these nifty little bottle feeders. And what we do with these is we can feed multiple goats at one time. And it makes it a little bit easier to look at them and give them a little health check while they're eating. And the main things we're looking for is just to make sure that there's no diarrhea. Everybody's eating and everybody is hungry. A goat should always be hungry whenever it gets its bottle. It should never act uninterested. Now, before you take a baby goat home, the person you're buying that baby goat from should tell you how much that baby is drinking. And they should help you with an idea of understanding how to go about weaning that baby goat. If they don't do that, then it's probably not a good place to get a baby goat from. Now, these babies are probably about three, they're actually about five weeks old now. Um, and they are currently on morning and evening bottles. They're eating lots of hay and lots of branches as well. And what we do with our branches is, I just threw these in here but the best way to keep your branches is up where the goats sleep and hang out a lot because throughout the day, they're gonna get hungry and that encourages them to eat them. So I like to stick the branches in the hay feeders, kind of like this, so that they see them up high and it encourages that metabolism to start kicking in so the baby goats start eating these branches up. Branches and hay are gonna be the best thing that you can ever feed your baby goat. We do not feed our baby goats any grain at all until they're probably about six months old, three to six months old. And that's just because we wanna make sure that that CDT vaccine is working well so that you don't have any issues with bloat or enterotoxemia. And really they don't need any grain if they're eating a good amount of hay and they were weaned at the correct time. you can see these guys are starting to finish up. So once everybody's done, we're gonna watch these two little tinier ones just to make sure that one goat doesn't go to the other goat's bottle and take it from them. Because if one goat overeats, if he eats more than he's supposed to, then what'll happen is he may get diarrhea. And diarrhea can cause a lot of issues, dehydration among other things. Now, with your bottles, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you keep them very, very clean. We use new bottles every probably four or five uh, times that we rinse them out. We use Sprite bottles because we have a Sprite drinker in the family. And the type of nipple that you're using is a Pritchard's nipple. But again, whenever you take a baby goat home, you're gonna go over with whoever you're buying that goat from 
what to feed them and how much to feed them. You wanna to stick to that because getting a sick baby goat is no fun. So just to summarize, feeding baby goats. Generally what we do is for the first 10 days to two weeks of the baby goat's life, we feed it goat's milk. It's mother's milk, it gets colostrum and then full goat's milk. After that initial two weeks, we start gradually switching it over to cow's milk, which whenever we sell a baby goat and it goes home with the new owners, that's what it's gonna be on, 100% cow's milk. Now you wanna make sure you don't get 1% or 2%, you wanna get whole red top cow's milk. Doesn't really matter if it's organic or not, it's whatever your preference is, but be sure it's whole cow's milk. You're gonna feed it the amount that you've discussed with me or whoever, whoever you're purchasing the goat from. We do not recommend using any type of powdered formula or any canned formula or anything like that. Cow's milk is great for a growing baby goat and it is the next best thing to actually giving it goat's milk. If you feed them raw cow's milk, then you are gonna be opening them up to a few of those diseases we spoke about earlier because those can be transmitted through milk. So we do recommend feeding them a pasteurized milk if you're not feeding them our goat's milk. Another thing is, I cannot stress the importance of learning what different types of trees grow in your area. Pine trees are the number one thing that we serve the baby goats year round. We put pine branches all over this pen. That's what all of our baby goats learn to eat initially. They start out with pine, it has lots of tannins in it which helps with parasites and it's kind of sad rumored to also help with coccidia which is number one thing that causes death to baby goats. So stick with lots and lots of tree branches, learn your local flora and make sure that you keep your babies happy, dry and healthy. Ah. All right guys, so one of the breed of goats that we primarily sell is the Nigerian dwarf goats. And this is one that you can see here, just kidding, but we do have to go feed this guy. So we're gonna wrap up this video while we're feeding him in the barn. Let's go. So the reason why I wanted to end in this pen right here is because this would be a good idea for if you were taking home young, young babies. Let's say that you were taking home babies that were one to three weeks old. We generally don't sell them that young. But if you were, they are not smart enough to know to go in and out of the rain. So their entire shelter would need to be enclosed. Meaning that if it's pouring down rain outside, they need to, you need to make sure that they don't have the option to get wet. So this right here is a fully covered stall, and this is where we keep our baby on cold nights. All right, guys, as always, if you're interested in purchasing a baby goat from us, check out our website, www.goatdaddies.com, and we've got any available babies listed on there. Freya, you're eating cow poop, and that's disgusting. <clears throat> I think I'm gonna vomit. Okay, let's just wrap this up. All right, so um, yeah, check them out on, Gloria, you're so disgusting. Um, check out any available baby goats on Facebook, on, check the website out if you want a goat. Make sure you have your setup. I gotta like you. If I don't like you, no baby goats are going home with you. All that stuff. Bye!